Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the video. This is gonna be awesome. I've actually been really looking forward to doing this video. Uh, this is uh, Simone Bianchi, Bianchi. Um, I think it's Simone Bianchi. Um, so hopefully I'm pronouncing it right, but I've been a huge fan of his work for many, many years. His work is beautiful. It's, it's expertly uh, drawn and painted and it's very stylish and exciting and dynamic and colorful. It's great. Uh, so yeah, we'll get into this in one sec. Let me do a quick intro. So yeah, super fun Sunday. I've been doing these actually for a few years now and, uh, Generally, what I do is is I either pick a book or an artist that, that I'm a fan of or something that I haven't seen in a while, and uh, we go through it. And Simone definitely fits into that category. I've been a fan of his work for many, many years, probably since he first started to bubble into American comics or I saw his work online. One thing with his work is, as a fan, it's been a little hard to follow his career because he generally does, I kind of consider them somewhat special projects. And so um, sometimes I miss them and then I'll, I'll uh, stumble upon them later. Uh, so as, as a fan, I've, I've found it sometimes more challenging, but with Instagram now, I mean, you can find him. So I will have links to all of his uh, social media. And then the other thing I just wanted to say is, um, remember my channel is about fun and comics and art okay you're never going to come here and have me do rants or uh, get into politics or arguing and stuff like that that's not what my channel is about so i just want to reiterate that i've said it in in the front of many videos over the last couple of years but it you know it's never bad to reiterate it, but yeah, I know that people are worked up right now and there's a lot going on in the world, but uh, this is one spot that you can come and the focus is always just on honestly having a laugh and looking at some art. So, all right, let's get into this. What is Super Fun Sunday? It's going to be super fun. <laughs> all right, so this is a badass Silver Surfer piece. Um, let me get rid of this. And this is from his Instagram. I will have a link to his Instagram and I'll look to see if he has the, like an art dealer or anything like that online. We'll go into full screen mode because it's just looks sexier, right? Um, so this is hand painted and um, I've actually seen some of his original art in person. And uh, it's funny, I'm dying to wipe this out right here. I don't know if you could see me doing it, but this there's a little bit of a dark area there and the OCD in me wants to clean it up for him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm looking at this piece and my eyes just like focus like right here I'm just like God, just let me get rid of it let me do it so that I can focus on this piece <laughs> um but yeah what's it's really fun is that he paints his stuff traditionally but he uses real thick board that was that was my point is I actually had a piece of his art in my house a friend of mine bought a really nice um I think it was an Avengers piece and it wasn't finished and he wanted me to go in and actually finish it for him. And uh, yeah, he uses, not, I'm not saying always, but but uh, some of his pieces are on very, very thick, um, like crescent illustration board. It's beefy, you know, it's not even like paper. It's like board board. The stuff is probably two or three millimeters thick. So, yeah. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Oh my God, there's so much good stuff. So this looks like a work in progress and um, you know, it is, it's really, really interesting to see how he works through his stuff. I love the fact that on Instagram, not just now, but for the last few years, we've been able to see more and more behind the scenes process of how artists work. I find it so fascinating and really actually quite helpful. So it's, it's as much as I think it helps their channel sort of, um, or, or their, their page, whatever you want to call it, um, stay interactive and competitive with their peers meaning that you know you you've got people tuning in because you're showing behind the scenes it's exciting for people but it's very very educational um for for aspiring artists i mean just seeing tape on a piece like this you might go oh okay that's how he gets the clean edges it's little little takeaways like that really do add up um and and also just seeing like how he builds up the paint like if we see another uh, version of this more finished we'll go oh, okay so he started putting in the um this hot rim lighting early on in the process or whatever it ends up being. And um, so his work to me always has a little bit of a cartoony vibe. Um, some of his structure, it's always big and chunky. His characters have always just had a very, very big, juicy um, vibe to them. And uh, man, he's not afraid to pull on the camera super, super tight and draw hu humongous things. So there's always a very stylish line to his work.
This is nice. This is really, really going to be a fun video. This is a great opportunity for me to look. Oh my god, are you kidding me? So this is the finished on that? Dude! Wow. Now that's insane, right? This foot is a little weird to me. Like, it's a, I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble seeing exactly what the shape is. I don't know. This... This right here seems to throw me off a little bit. It pops out so much. But anyway, past that, I would have never in a million years thought that that thing that we saw before would turn into something this elaborate. How about you? It looks like there's a little bit of a digital blur here for maybe the um, uh, this scan. Yeah, yeah, he put a little bit of a blur there. He didn't really need it, honestly. I'd be curious what the original looks like. These look like they might have been put in digitally. But again, you could do this with an airbrush or, or um, even a little bit of white splattered ink. God, that is great. Dude, what a fun piece. Man, that is awesome. Gosh, wow. I'm really impressed, that is nice. A lot of detail on the surfer, you know, it's it's almost looks reptilian a little bit and, and a little almost like, um, not a sarcophagus, but very like anatomical, like some of this in here. It's still cool though. I mean, it's his style, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it almost has like a little bit of a scaling effect to it. He like said his stuff gets very, very detailed. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, man. Those are big feet. Again, he does some pretty, pretty crazy proportions and stuff like that. Again, I like it though. I like, I like the stylization of it. And and what it is is he's offering you a fix of something that you may not see elsewhere. That's really cool. Oh man, this is gonna be such a good video. <laughs> um, shoot. So this is something that I heard. I don't know if it's true. And it doesn't really matter that much, but I, I think I heard at one point that maybe on some of his job jobs, jobber jobs, as Kelsey calls them, um, uh, he might use an assistant sometimes to lay down flat washes, which would speed things up a little bit for him. But I don't know if that's true, but I did. I do think that I heard that at one point. Um, but look, you know, just laying flat washes is not a big deal. It's just a time consuming thing that his time could be better spent elsewhere. Um, what you do here, if you look at these bricks right here, it looks like he put a little bit of uh, diluted white paint on it. So you, you would lay down one color of wash. So say like the bricks originally had this color right here or, or something along the lines of this. The white on it starts to lighten them up. You could do it with a wash fade, meaning use lighter wash to darker wash. Um, but either way, man, that is so cool. It's funny because, you know, I've, I've mentioned this in a few videos now and we're hitting stuff that like I, I said in um, the Kelly Jones video that I don't really collect original art. I just never have. I have uh, at times, but many, many years ago, mostly because I can't afford it. Um, but uh, it, it's just uh, it's been interesting. The last couple of days I've looked at artists where I go like I would actually love to own something from si Simone Bian Bianchi. I think it would actually be really, really fun. And he has such beautiful techniques um, that it would be exciting to be able to look at it close up. Man, you know this is going to be insane when he's done with it. I don't know if this is a prelim or what. Again, mo most, well, not most, all of the stuff that I'm going to show is from his Instagram. So uh, I don't know. This looks like very textured paper. Boy, you can really see the lines in it. It's interesting. Wow. That's so crazy. So and someone had asked me recently about blue pencil. Well, here you can see, I mean, he's obviously um, tightening this up a little bit with, um, or, well, that's weird. I'm trying to think of what the technique could have been. This, well, maybe this is paper and it just has a heavy texture on it. Because I don't know how you could print out on Crescent board. Like, that wouldn't run through a printer. So this actually, I would now speculate, is um, just rough paper that he can run. I'm, I'm assuming what he did is he had some of the breakdown done digitally. Unless he needed to work something out, and then he just drew it on the original. I'm not really sure what the exact approach would have been. This is clearly done in either Clip Studio or something. Photoshop, you know, one of the two. 
Interesting. It's nice that he shows this, though. You know, he's not hiding the technique that he's blending digital and traditional. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that, um, to be clear. I think years ago, artists were more sensitive about showing things like that because they could sort of detract from sort of like, oh, see, that's how he does it. And then it's, it seems to take away full credit for anything that you do, whereas you might do 99.999995% all out of your head or traditionally or you know just using more um stock methods that how you would draw something but you know you do a shield in like a 3d program and everyone's like see he does digital <laughs> it's like lighten up everyone jeez louise we're just artists this is a very very detailed piece I can't even imagine how long something like this would take. This has got a lot of finesse to it. It's interesting. So I talked to Lee Bermejo. Lee is definitely interested in coming on the channel. I'm very, very excited for him to be here. And boy, I'll tell you what. You want to talk about detail. I don't, this fist is making me think of Lee or some of this, a little bit of this. Um, but man, Lee just goes nuts with stuff. So his stuff is going to be very, very fun to look at. I'd love to get Lee on twice. Lee would be a perfect artist. I was mentioning that the goal is to have someone come on where we go over their art and I ask them questions like, you know, kind of like a dro drooling fanboy. <laughs> Maybe that should be called the series, drooling fanboy, where you get to ask them all the geeky questions. How'd you render that knee? How'd you do this or that? And then we bring him back on and we have him look at an artist or like Phil Hale, like Lee loves Phil Hale. Like it would be fun to look at uh, Phil Hale and see it through Lee's eyes. So look at the knees here, how he draws the knees. It was interesting. I did a... um almost a 50 minute drawing video for uh, Patreon yesterday. And I was talking about thinking about the elbows a bit like this. And I even did break down a couple of knees um, that I, I uh, showed, uh, but uh, this kind of stuff helps and it's a very simplified version of it, but it really will help you construct figures more solidly. And then you can put your fun um, pizzazz on it. But yeah, Bianchi's always had pretty, pretty chunky anatomy. It's very, very beefy almost looks carved of wood, you know? He's so good. That's interesting seeing these fists. Nice big chunky meaty fist. You know, and, and look, I always say on these videos, you pick up one or two little techniques each time you watch one of these, it really, really stacks up, you know? All of a sudden you've learned, you know, 150 things over a few months. And that's really where good stuff starts to happen. Yeah, he's a really good artist, man. I don't know. Does Thor wear striped shorts like this? I don't recognize it from a costume, but uh, it looks funny because it looks like he's wearing um, fancy underwear. This is cool. Oh, man, look at this. Woo! Yeah, he always has this kind of dappled, like, man, look at that texture up here. It's beautiful. This is really nice, too. Man, alive. So fun looking. Gosh. He's really creative. What's up with the checkerboard? That's interesting. Is that from a book? The checkerboard floor? Like, is is that like a Doctor Strange thing? Like, or a villain that... that uh, I see space through this panel. That's interesting. And these. I don't know what the reference is for. It's actually very, very cool, though. It's like space and some sort of... Other thing. This is interesting. Man, it's so fun looking. One thing that I noticed that he, he does, and I saw it on the other fist, and I was like, should I say something or not? You'll see at times that, that sometimes he he really, really will simplify, in, in particular fists. I've noticed it for years in his stuff. You see this, where it's a little, like, undefined, um, but it's kind of a style thing for him. But yeah, it's like he's not, a, I mean, I hate to say he's not 100% sure of, like, how to draw it. But um, he'll he'll really suggest it more than draw it, and even this fist. Uh, well, I guess your thumb would kind of hit there. I was like, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. But you'll notice it with his fists, and again, it's not a big deal. But yeah, sometimes they get a little, they'll be a little nondescript. Yeah, this is crazy. And this is interesting too. So we saw this piece finished, but you could actually see that that um, how much structure he actually kind of put in with the face here. So it's a really, really difficult shot, that up view like this. And this is great. Man, look at the anatomy here. Man, that's so cool. Here's your tricep. 
junk, junk, junk. I showed this yesterday. See the muscles overlapping and wrapping around each other? Really, really um, very, very cool. So much stuff tucks into this area here. Man, that's a great pack too. Gosh. That's cool. And you can see he actually, um, I don't know if he statted the hand or what. He's got a little bit of, it almost looks like tape there. That's really fascinating. So what is going on there? That's interesting. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like tape and like he taped down the hand. Maybe he uses like um, graphite, tr uh, like you can use uh, like carbon paper. You can use, um, uh, they have a graphite one. And so what you can do is like, say like if you erased out the hand and you were having trouble with it, you could work it out until you get the hand the way that you want it and then use the graphite carbon paper and put it down and then you would draw over it and it would project, like not project, but it transfers like lead onto your um, your board. So it could be something like that. I'm not really sure. I can't imagine that he tapes something down and then inks over it. Man, look at this, this is so beautiful. We'll probably see some of his tools a little bit later. He had some photographs of his desk, which again, I love. I love to see this, how these guys have their workspace set up. I love to see what's lying around their office and what tools and how many brushes and stuff like that. So it's neat that he's, he's shared some photos of that. And I will be showing a lot of stuff like that too. I'm going to start actually being much more active on Instagram again. So, um, I'll, I'll have three main haunts. Although I'm even, I'm posting a little tiny bit more on Facebook. Um, Facebook, I was, I kind of joke and I call it like doom and gloom. I don't really call it that. It feels that way. Whenever I go there, it's like, I always, it's like somebody's always died. There's always like death notices there. So it's kind of depressing, but that is life. Um, so yeah, but, uh, I, I really going to kind of just start working on all my social media and not, I, I wouldn't call it like a rebranding of myself. It's funny. It almost looks like a face right here. Like, oh, you know what? I wonder if it is a reflection of the character that he's facing. I don't know. It might be my imagination, but um, yeah, I want I want to start getting more active with it. I think I've been too complacent for a while and just kind of focus mainly on um, YouTube. But uh, it is time to start sharing more art uh, on other platforms. Get in the mix. I'm enjoying it more too. I was I was excited. I shared a girl's art, uh, Jezzerine Taylor, uh, a little like a week or so ago. Really, really love her stuff. Whenever I see a story or a new post from her, I'm always kind of excited to see what she's up to. She's a college student up in Canada and she's really, really good. Um, ton of potential. Man, I can't even imagine how she's gonna be drawing in like a few years. It's gonna be ridiculous. But um, she cracked 10,000 subs. So I was happy to see that because when I think when I shared the post, I'm not saying that I got her there, but uh, she was four or 500 away. So it's cool to see that she made it there. But I try to do that with everyone. I mean, it's difficult because I follow almost 2,300 people on Instagram. I mean, I really, like, if you follow me, generally I'll follow you back as long as I see that you're mainly focused on art. Occasionally on Facebook and Twitter, someone will follow me, and I kind of check out their page, and it's not really art-focused. And so that's the only time I'm really not that interested, um, just because I don't want a bunch of non-art stuff sort of popping up in my feed, honestly. I get people want to express themselves, though, so I'm giving everybody the room to do that probably to my detriment <laughs> but uh like i said no politics from me no attacking other people it's not my thing it never has been and it never will be all right got my word this is cool this almost has a little tiny bit of a kevin nolan feel right here um his spidey is interesting i saw a really weird spider-man online the other day it was so late they had done so much detail on the webs here it was almost too much i wish i could remember who it was it was a very weird piece a good artist though really good artist but man their take on spider-man was completely bizarre this is awesome right here man this guy looks so cool it reminds me of a ryan benjamin um he had a book phantom guard it reminds me of a phantom guard character this is really cool too I'm trying to think. Simone did a really, really cool and quite long series for DC about 10 years back. It might have even been with Mark Millar. I'm trying to remember. I have two hardcovers of it. It's really good, though. But he just got better and better. 
I'm, I'm kind of thinking, like, he's been at Marvel, like, the last decade, mainly. Has he done any European graphic novels for fans of his that maybe are outside the U.S.? I'm trying to think if he has. I wish I could remember the name of that book. Oh, my God. Look at this. Wow. Spidey's face almost has a little bit of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle feel to it. But, my God, the painting technique on this is beautiful. Wow. Wow. It, it's funny because it almost has a little tiny, tiny bit of a, um, the Mobius uh, Spider-Man vibe to me. Just a bit. The painting technique is a bit different, but even the color palette. Man, that is nice. Jesus. The lighting right here and then how stuff goes in the shadows is really, really cleverly done. One exciting thing about these videos too, and it's still I, I see it all the time um, as comments come through, or or people will send me little notes and stuff like that. How many artists people discover from these videos, and they thank me for exposing them to them. So it's 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 exciting to see that because it's pretty cool to be able to share someone's work and and you kind of assume I guess maybe that most people would know them, but you know many times we don't, you know. beefy legs yeah this guy just really makes drawing look fun I'm assuming this is maybe like a bunch of pieces that uh, connected to show something on Instagram but it's cool to see the detail a little bit of chunky paint on there he's legit man really really oh man look at that I'll tell you if I see the piece that uh, my friend commissioned me to work on if I see it I'll let you know beefy legs again like i said he's not afraid of beef oh we can see a little bit so it looks like he puts down a little bit of like um vellum or something to uh do it lots of tools here boy oh boy look at that that's a workspace we kind of joked about that but but a working artist space looks like this <laughs> not those pretty pictures you see where it looks like you're inside of like um uh what do they call it like store everything or whatever i'm trying to Contain like the container store. Oh, this was actually the very was this was like the first or second piece that we saw in pencil. Yeah, see again, this fist is a little this right here. Just it, it he'll he'll it's so just the way that he draws it, I think, but he always makes it real um almost protruded and a little like um he did it right on another fist. It was funny, too, is he put, like, a line, like, right here, and it really actually made the fist look perfect. It might have been this hand right here, in fact, um, in the pencils. But, uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing. We've all got little areas that are just difficult for us to always hit, you know? And it's, it's, it's interesting, too, because you can work them out, and then sometimes they'll slowly creep back in. They're like, I call them isms, remember? <laughs> I've got my own truckload of isms that I'm going to try to slowly wean myself off of. And then uh, you just have to stay on it, you know, and watch them. Because they'll come back as soon as you don't start to give your art the love that it deserves. <coughs> isms. <laughs> this is incredible. Like, like so the, the commission piece that my friend was getting me to do... Uh, he wanted me to, like, it was a piece like this that he, he, Simone had abandoned, but a lot of it was done and painted in wash. And uh, he wanted me to go in and sort of um, finish it. And, I mean, like, imagine trying to get the level of finish that Simone puts on his pieces, even working from this. It's like, it's all there, and, you know, it's it's yours for the taking. But... You, when you see how brilliant he is at finishing these pieces, you realize it's like, oh man, I, I, and I wasn't kidding myself that I could ever do it at his level. It was just, it was a request. Can you do it? And I said, well, I could try. <laughs> Can't guarantee anything. But, uh, you know, but you would just follow his lighting cues and try to make it work and look at other pieces that maybe he had finished and see if you can cobble together something along the lines in fact it's interesting the piece that my friend had was something similar to something like this it had a lot of characters on it and uh maybe this area like like this area about was not done something like that and uh, 
I ultimately just, I didn't have time to, to do it. I had it here at my house for a while. And I just said, look, I'm not comfortable doing it. I don't want to mess up your piece. Just, I think you're better off just keeping it as is. So sometimes I'll pass on commissions. I don't really like, I mean, I don't like working on people's stuff that is not done. It's, it's weird. This is interesting. It's like, it almost feels like he's like zooming out. Or, you know what I mean? Like, because it's so... Yeah, sometimes at comic book conventions, people will get really, really loose commissions from people, like a pencil sketch or something like that, and they want you to try to finish it and turn it into sort of like a finished cover quality piece, and you're just like, oh, this one's never going to get there, friend. I know the fantasy is... It. I, oh, my God, this one guy, he... Yeah. I wish I could remember who, who the artist was. They're a pretty popular artist, but it was like a doodle. I think it was a Sylvestri doodle. And they were like, can you turn this into like a, like a real nice portrait in Sylvestri style? I'm like, man, I'm like, you need to just leave this alone. Like, you're trying to make diamonds out of, uh, you know, a pebble. It was a nice sketch. I mean, uh, for what it was. It looked like it took Mark, you know, 25 seconds to draw. This is a great thing pose. Man, that is awesome. Lee Weeks. I'm pretty sure it was Lee Weeks. Just posted a beautiful, beautiful thing piece. Look at that pose. Man, that is so awesome to see in pencil. Wow. Dude, this guy is so freaking good. Look how cartoony this is. Man, that is so awesome. Jeez. That's really incredible. Man, this thing pose is really, really cool. Kind of soaking it in. Wow. Unbelievable. So much to learn, little Richie. So much to learn. It's funny because when I opened the first chunk of pages, this was the last one that opened. So I know right now we're not halfway through the video, but I remember this. I don't know what book this is from. That looks like Tammy Faye Baker. <laughs> A very young Tammy Faye Baker. Wow, this is nice. Man, that he uses textured board. That's really crazy. This is some... Look at the texture. Oh, that, I'm going to have to ask in the comments section what kind of paper he's using it's a nerdy fanboy question but I don't you know it would be weird to work on such rough board my pencils are so tight I think it would weird me out having my lines be so like almost like they're drawn on like corduroy what do you think can you anyone work on rough board like this maybe can you actually identify it by the, the actual board itself wow and this, you can still see a texture on it. It's like that crescent board like I was talking about. This is really cool. Someone had asked her, Simon Bisley. I kind of felt like this was the best of both worlds. It's not Bisley, but it's like, uh, it has the entertainment value of Bisley and might be something that you haven't looked at a lot of. I've done Bisley a few times, so that was another reason why I just opted to not do him today. I'm not 100% sure what that is, but... <laughs> we'll let it go. So cool that people post pieces like this in this level of process. That Wonder Woman head or whoever this female character is right here is really, really great. Man, that's such an awesome angle. Boy, he nailed that. The hair is very cool, too. Every time I do one of these videos, I always think, man, can it get any better? And then we do some in the following week, and it's just as fun and exciting and interesting. This is nice. He has some similarities to Ryan Benjamin. It's interesting. Because Ryan's um, a book that he did on um, 
shoot, I can't think of the name of that company. Webtoons. Kind of has a little bit of this feel. Ryan's like a really good cartoonist, but he's got, you know, the heavy image uh, style too. Okay, so this is a Mark Millar, Mark Millar book too. Interesting. I've never, ever seen this. This is kind of what I'm talking about though. So this is Sharky the Bounty Hunter. No idea about this book. Never, ever seen it, but I bet it's good. I bet it is really good. With Millar writing it, I mean, you know it's going to be a pretty badass story. I'm assuming this is from it, too. God, look at the freaking anatomy on this guy. See, looking at this stuff, I'm just like, oh, man, I suck. <laughs> so, don't... When you look at stuff in my videos and you go, my gosh, I'm never going to get there. I feel the same way. Don't worry about it. All you can do is the best that you can do right now. Try to improve. That's it. That's all you can do. It also depends on how you draw. Like, I'm going for a certain thing, and so it's, like, weird when you see someone that paints and does all this other stuff, and you're just trying to do, you know, a, a different thing. Because then you go, like, oh, man, should be adding more detail, more texture, more, you know, more lips. <laughs> He's like, hello, Rich. I've been waiting for you. You know, this is a tough piece to paint. You could very, very easily mess up the eyes and have him look cross-eyed or like a, something weird could go on. This is the danger zone right here. But yeah, the eyes, man, I'll tell you what. You put the pupil or the highlight in the wrong spot and all of a sudden Batman's going to look like he uh, had too many um, glasses of wine at dinner or something. This is cool. I like his little highlights. Bink, bink, bink. Bink, 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 bink. Bink, bink. <laughs> it's interesting, too, because I don't know. Oh, okay, I was going to say this piece isn't done. Um, it does get brighter over here, so you would almost think that, that uh, he would have more of those little poppers, but uh, he's not finished. It's funny. Carl Stian and I did a piece very, very early on in our career. It was a source book piece. And we had an area that looked just like that. It's funny. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oops. Wow. That is really cool. God, man. He's one of those artists, too, that when I see his work, like, it's, it's you know, characters that, like Spider-Man, you've seen him so many times. But certain people, it, it's you really get caught up in kind of the story of the image, and you forget about everything else, and just kind of go into that one drawing, and it's like, I'm, I, like I would be interested to see a Spider-Man book by this guy. I think it would be really, really cool. It's the, the magic of good art, you know, it really, um, it kind of takes you away. I think that's why I, I have such a weird relationship with drawing superheroes. I was saying to a friend of mine, okay, so this is clearly taped down. That's interesting. For the life of me, I can't figure out where this is going from here, what he could possibly do. That's really interesting. Hopefully we circle back to the finished version of this and we see what goes on. I mean, I'm guessing that this is maybe the, the ultimate hand that he goes with, but what I'm curious is, is, is this a transfer or what is he doing? Because like I said, I can't imagine that he's gonna paint over this with the tape. It doesn't make any sense. This is a mysterious, this is what, this is the mystery for this video. We, we generally have one, wow, this is nice. I remember when he posted this. This is ridiculously good. God dang. It's funny because I consider Ben Oliver the headshot guy, like on Instagram. Like, he's the dude that always draws big headshots of characters. But man, alive, that is great. Oh, I'm so glad I, I picked this guy today. It was just what I needed. I guess you're just what I needed. I needed some Simon, Simon Bianchi. <laughs> but it's really a great scan of it too, boy. You can really see the paint like on his face right here. Wow, this dude is a stud. I've never met him, and I don't 
I don't even know if I've, I think I did see him at a comic con. In fact, I know exactly where I saw him because I saw him. I was talking to Travis and he came up and, um, uh, bought a sketchbook and, and, um, you know, was, was hanging out there for a second. That's where I saw him, but uh, I've never met him. Like I said, I've been a fan of his stuff since he first came over to America, as far as I know. Oh, this is really good, too. Man, he does a great thing. This is, again, kind of got like that Mobius feel in the background. And then this is really, really nice. Man, god dang. Freaking dude is solid. This almost has a little bit of a Chris Stevens vibe. Chris just, uh, he's another person I should actually do a video on. You know what? Next weekend, let's do Chris Stevens. We're going to decide right now. He's great. I first met him on uh, DeviantArt, and uh, yeah, he's fantastic. So good. This is cool. Hopefully I remember to do him next week. It's always weird when you do someone that you kind of know. I mean, I don't know Chris personally. We've never really spoke. Uh, I, I think we maybe have chatted briefly, like on DeviantArt many years ago, but... Uh, I don't really know him, but uh, it's always weird because you go, man, they're going to watch it at some point, and then it's kind of uncomfortable because it's like when I mean, you're talking about someone's art, and it's, you know what I mean? Like, it just it feels a little weird. Was I remember when I started doing these videos, kind of like trying to avoid people that were alive <laughs> at first. <laughs> Sounds funny. It's like, okay, there's no chance that I'll ever meet this person. Not necessarily that they were all deceased, but um, you know what I mean? Like someone uh, that was out of the United States or whatever. You're like, all right, like this is... I feel more comfortable with this, but like, you know, have, you know, Neil Adams or something walk up to your show and go, Hey, that YouTube video you did, you got that wrong. It wasn't, that wasn't the character. I wasn't like thinking that and you're like, I'm sorry, sir. This is trying to do some sort of commentary. Gosh. I love the colors on this one. The, the purple and this green and then this really, really nice. Kind of greeny blue up here is very very cool and then this the yellow um little highlights in the gun this is excellent yeah okay put them on the list i have a short list now of people that i want to buy original art from in the next few years this dude is on it you're on the list mr bianchi you, you made the list <laughs> and that is really cool Dang. Art is so cool. That's why I said my channel is about art. We could we could drift away into this magical world every day. What do we need to worry about other stuff for, right? Let's check this out. It's interesting. I almost thought this was like a very extreme upshot at first until I, I started to feel more grounded as I moved this way and then I saw the cars and I went, oh okay. This is killer. Really, really great. Oops, I'm sorry. I meant to uh, rotate the canvas. I wanted to see. What is that? Oh, I guess it's a gargoyle. See, and this is this is really cool. Well, I'll explain why. Is is the idea of Batman on a gargoyle or Batman with a gargoyle? There's certain stock ones, you know, like maybe like your first idea of what you would do with it is generally like him and a gargoyle. It's very literal, but this is like man. He really came at it from a very unique perspective and gave us, li literally, um, gave us a bunch of gargoyles and even one like that's super, super in the foreground. It's very, very cool. Very creative. And it's got a little bit of the Michael Keaton vibe to me. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I remember. He does a great Doctor Doom. Wow, dude. This is like Drew Struzan and Bisley and Bianchi all rolled into one magical, delicious piece. <laughs> A little busily maybe down there I don't even know this guy's great there we go I've been drawing a lot of tanks for um for the heavy metal story that I'm working on you'll see um, they're not like literal tanks but but the uh, more probably like what do you call it like Warhammer is that what it is yeah. Warhammer kind of thing it's heavy metal I mean you know it's gonna be sci-fi <laughs> it, 
almost looks like he's wearing like a woman's dress, just the tiniest bit. I think when it, when it's probably finished painted, it, it'll it'll look different. But yeah, it's funny. It looks like he's wearing like a little girl's uh, like summer dress or something. That doesn't though, you know. So this is interesting too. So I guess he inks some of it. Very rough line. I mean, uh, it's it's chunky and kind of organic looking. This dude is such a badass. Oh my god, look at this. Jeez Louise. I don't know about you, but this is bringing me down. No. <laughs> it's like, these artists, like, this, it, what's crazy too is, so he had like, uh, it shows like 300 and some odd posts on Instagram, but if you if you look at all the images, it's over 500. And this is not even a drop in the bucket of all the stuff that he's done. I mean, it's not even probably one tenth of all the art that he's created because there's no sequential stuff and he has a ton of that and uh, uh, like covers and stuff. It's like, man, it's this is just a drop in the bucket for what this guy has done and it's so good. <laughs> the colors through this whole area right here are like magic. Man, it's really cool. I'm assuming he's like, yeah, he's kind of like a chameleon where he's he's changing into the, like, blending into this. It's pretty cool. This hand maybe could have mimicked this a little bit more, but I think um, if it would have, it might have blended in a little too much, maybe. It's hard to say. It's really, really fantastic, though. Good. Here we go. Wow. So this is weird too. What the fuck is he doing? That's really trippy. All right, we need. To, I need to go back in the folder. I want to see something really quick. Yeah. I want to find uh, that piece and uh, see what the finish looked like. If we can spot the um. Just give me one sec, sorry. I just want to re I try to reverse engineer this thing really quick. I'm very, very curious now. Here it is. So he does paint on this. Can we see? I mean, I'm sure he tried to blend in with the head, right? So. Let me pull this out. I wonder if he pasted that down. Um, so this would be the edge of it. I think it is right here. This is it right here. It, it goes like this. Interesting. I wonder if it's there. That's wild. Wild. So who knows, maybe maybe he was, like that hand that he was fixing, what he'll eventually do is take a piece of Bristol, redo it, and then just tape it down and then paint over it. It's possible. This is very, very cool. I guess he didn't like how it turned out. Uh, um, I mean, uh, when he was painting the face, it must have gone to a place that, that didn't work for him. Sometimes you can only rework it so many times, you know what I mean, where, um, oh, this is nice. Um, uh where the, the paper starts to get fatigued. He has a very, very fancy signature, too. His nipple is very far over. I picture it more like right here. It's like, hey, I got a nipple. No. <laughs> it's a very attractive Wolverine. Wow. That's nuts. This looks like something for a video game almost. Last of Us Spider Man. <laughs> wow. The Walking Forward page. The team has arrived. Again, this is just incredible. There's so much detail on this, and the fact that he's able to go in and keep building this up and building this up and building this up, and then ultimately probably painting it too, is just astounding to me. 
Because it's all there. Like, there's, you know what I mean? Like, he's giving you all the information, and the f he just takes it so far. And controls his values very, very well. Wow, look at this. Man alive. I actually, I'm assuming this is Spider-Man 2099. I love that character and was a big fan of that comic book. I like both Spider-Man 2099 and um, uh, Punisher. Uh, I had the Doom comics. I don't remember the Doom one as much, but I would definitely check it out again. But yeah, the 2099 line was actually very, very fun. Spider-Man 2099 was uh, Rick Leonardi and Al Williamson, I think. This is great. Wow. Yeah, man, this guy is such a badass. I actually like how he handled the um, fabric here. Just that one big fold, or like, whatever you call it, like a sort of sweep in it. It's very, very cool. Oh, my gosh. I feel like we really spoiled ourselves today. This is cool. Man, alive. This dude is unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's nice. Nice little pencil sketch. It's got the blue pencil going down. Again, dude, like, look how much work has gone into this piece already. And the fact that he's just starting to paint it is absolutely insane. Do you realize how much work that is? nuts. Wow. Oh, man, that's nice. Jeez. God dang. This dude is so good. <laughs> it's funny, because this... I don't know, is it, like, Juan Jimenez, it's kind of reminded me of. Love what he did with the water here. Man, it's beautiful. And the blood in the water is super duper creepy. Super duper creepy. Tough, tough shot for the face, too. Upshot like that. Boy, I'll tell you what. And then painting it? Yikes. He is brave, brave man. Oh, there he is. It looks like Surge. Early Surge from System of a Down. Sugar. <laughs> Sugar era. <laughs> yeah, this is nice. Very, very like dramatic and heroic uh, gesture here. And this is beautiful, too. Man. I can't believe that we have access to all this stuff now. We, it, It's like people that were... Uh, following art before the internet will know what I mean. It's one thing if you're a little bit younger and you've always sort of had the opportunity to be able to follow people online and check out all these sketches and stuff like this, but man, the behind the scenes for aspiring artists is just, it's so worth its weight in gold to be able to see these sketches and how artists build things up. It's just incredible. Look at that, man. Dude. So this is interesting. It's like signed, looks like it went out the door this way and that he never finished it. But man alive, look at the cape. Oh, it's really, really cool. He has a very distinct way that he draws feet too. It is funny. Hands and feet are very like very distinct. He, he draws a fairly cartoony hand, too. Like, a lot of them, I mean, honestly, they almost have the structure of, like, a cheek's hand in some in some cases. This is interesting. Well, this was really, really interesting. I'm so... Wow, look at this. I'm trying to think of the actor that this reminds me of. It's not Lee Marvin, but it's, a, it's one of those old-fashioned actor dudes that was sort of around in the western times this is fun 
Oh my gosh. I'm excited. So Eric Kennedy and I have I've talked about this a little bit. I'm going to actually text him today and find out what day he wants to do it. But I'm going to try to get him either Tuesday or Thursday evening. We're going to do a live um, Mobius video where we go over 40 days in the desert uh, together. It was a book that he had and um, exposed me to at Wildstorm. And I would like to have him talk about the book. And then we'll look at the art and have him discuss it. And uh, I'm really excited to just hear his thoughts on, on the Mobius stuff. It's a really beautiful um, series of images that he did. Very expensive to get the original printings of it, but from what it looked like, there's one on eBay that's $50 that's like a more recent reprint. Um, you know, the book, the original book itself goes for anywhere from $155 to about $500. So um, if you're interested in it, go snap up that uh, $50 reprint because, uh, you know, anytime these videos pop up, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying mine, but KFAB or whatever, you know what I mean? You know that there's instantly going to be some interest in it. So I don't actually own the book, but I have Eric's original uh, blow-ups of it. <laughs> he made these huge posters and put them up at Wildstorm. And when he left, he, like when he left the studio, he actually left them there just for whoever. They hung up on the wall for years. And when Wildstorm was closing down, I was like, well, shit, I'm going to take these if they're just going to throw them away. So I have two of them here uh, in my uh, garage. I might I should break him out and snap a photo of him. It'd be funny to show him. But yeah, it's I'm assuming it's 40 images. So it won't be a super long video, but it'll be a fun one. This is nice too. Oh yeah, wow. God. This is what I'm talking about though. I'd be terrified to go over this with, with color. I just don't have I don't have that knowledge. <laughs> I can see good color, I can enjoy it, but to take this and paint it like he does, it's crazy. It's, he's an animal. <laughs> there he is, look, he's admiring his statues. I'll let you, you can look at the books later. Yeah, I see Alien versus Predator. If that's the design book, that could be uh, uh, Richard Bennett worked on that movie. Kruger, he's good, I have a Kruger book. I have this too, Intron Depot Blades. Looks like he has two and three. His books are organized, I like it. It's always exciting if you see one of your books on someone's shelf. <laughs> You're like, hey, he's got a comic book that I worked on. Oh, look at this. Dude, that is so awesome. Wow. I like this, this is very, very cool. Man, this dude is creative. It almost feels like Batman's coming out of the wall, but I'm assuming this is... I don't know what this is. It's weird. It, like, You know what I'm saying? Like, It looks like his cape is like coming out from here. And, and this, too. The way it's like hitting that. That's weird. I'm not really sure what that is. This is really neat. Wow, look at this, dude. Bianchi-licious. <laughs> this this uh, dappled color I love. Like This looks really cool. This is all really neat. This is all magical. His work has always had that very neat sort of... Oh, I, I meant to go backwards, sorry. Yeah, this is, this is getting into a little tiny bit of his older stuff. It's nice though, man. Look at that. Okay, I need to start wrapping this up. This is some of his earlier work. But it, he worked at DC though before this, I'm nearly sure. Somewhere I think I might have a sketchbook of Simone's work. I'm not positive. You can see the canvas texture on this too. It'd be interesting to know if he's uh, self-taught. You know, like did he just sort of slowly learn how to paint, or if uh, if he actually had some art education as a a young person, or or maybe even as an adult. You know, he never know. 
self-taught's a relative term. I mean, it's it's. I consider if you buy books and learn from books on your own, you're still self-taught. You know, even though you're learning from another educational source or like a gnomon. You know what I mean? It's it's not that you went somewhere and had someone teaching. It doesn't. I'm not saying that that's bad that you did, but uh, sometimes the idea of self-taught is a little confused. Wow. Damn. Pretty cool shot. Very dynamic. Wow. I never saw the piece that uh, was the commission. I know that there's a finished version of it out there, but it wasn't in these pages that I'm seeing, so... His eyes are very red. <laughs> wow. Look at the colors up here. All this green on the building and stuff. This is really amazing. Well worth following, I'll tell you what. See, he's getting ready to go in and paint this. It's interesting too because it looks like he's actually already put down some white paint on this. Uh, maybe this is digital. No, it doesn't because this isn't inked yet. Unless, you know, I wonder if this is like a scrapped page or maybe he digitally um, colored or painted this stuff himself. Like, like this got scanned and then he would finish it in Photoshop. That's possible. Or or it was given to the colors and then the colors would finish it. I'd have to see the book. But this some of this stuff clearly hasn't been inked yet. Okay. Nice space. That's cool. Kind of work in progress of that. Wow. Comic Con. Oh, well, there's the sketchbook right there, 2017. Very cool. Beautiful shot. It is a nice silver surfer. This is cool. I love the space kind of emerging through there. Very, very nice. That's really cool, too. Magic. Magic. Wow, look at the moon. Dang. Oh, that is great. I actually saw the pencils of this. I don't know if they'll be in this batch, but... Is it ever going to be winter here? Is it just going to stay summer all the time? Wow. That's crazy. That's interesting. I don't... Who would that character be with green, drippy slime? Who we, Who is he Who is he after? Do, we, do you know? I'm not sure. I'm trying to think who it would be. Killer Croc drooling on him from above? I don't know. Wow. Oh, I remember these covers. Like, Steve McNiven did a cover like this that was very kind of narrow and long and maybe covered a few books. Was it Civil War? It says almost like a Michael Turner vibe. Man, he really has dramatic lighting there. That's so cool. God, look at the architecture back here. Nuts. This is all just so good. Man, this guy's a badass. Oh, that's cool. Wow. 
This is another one where he was like fighting with the head. He's the he's the um, we'll call him the executioner. And he paints it in, I guess, drops it in somehow. I have that Batman statue. That's funny. Actually, here's the deal too. I'm gonna be selling it. So if anyone is interested in this is a sideshow premium format, I have the exclusive. Uh, let me know. I have the exclusive for this Batman. It's the black costume one, or whatever, black, not the blue. And then also uh, Poison Ivy. Both uh, the, whatever you call it, the premium. Uh, but I'm going to be selling them. So uh, if you want them, let me know. The Batman was never displayed. The Poison Ivy was up in my office for just a little bit, maybe a couple of months. But I don't have room for them. So uh, if, if anyone wants them, I'll give you a good deal. You let me know. I have the original shippers too in box, obviously. I got your back, little buddy. <laughs> it's a beautiful statue. If I had room for it, it would it would have been up. It's really really nice. This is what happens when you have a small. This is so great. It's such a good piece. Okay, we're gonna wrap this up. I gotta get going. You can find all of this on his Instagram, and he is really, really phenomenal, so you're not going to... A bad day will not happen when you're looking at this stuff. It's cool. Like, maybe an early version of that idea. It's cool. Man, it gets some beautiful effects. That's nice. I like that a lot. He does really good down shots of, of faces. I've, I've definitely noticed that, that uh, he's really good with that. This is really cool. Wow, look at that. Damn. That's a great fist, too. Very, very cool. Gosh. Yeah, that's really good. Wow. A Dylan dog, right? Groucho? I don't know. This is an interesting piece. It's got a little tiny bit of a taupey vibe to me, but it's probably just because of that Struzan esque uh, sort of layout. That's cool. I remember this piece. Oh, look at that. Wow. That's nice. Very dramatic. It's almost got like a, a Tim Bradstreet sort of vibe, but uh, very Bianchi as well. And the I like the bat on his chest. It's a pretty unique style. This is nice too. Well, goodness gracious. It's like I don't want to stop, but I got to. I got. I got to shoot a lesson, and then I got to get to work. All right, we'll do one more. Wow. Okay, we'll end it on this. <laughs> this is nice, man. His Vader helmet is is a little different than how like normal Darth Vader looks, just a bit. But I actually like it. It's it's kind of cool. It's a little unique, and uh, I think that sort of makes it fun. His almost has a little tiny bit more of a Japanese vibe to it. It's like a little more pointy and stuff. It's nice. Man, God, this guy really t he takes you places with his art. Let's peek it one more. <laughs> wow. Let, let's see. Jeez Louise. Can't stop. I just want the last one to come up. Oh my God, look at this. Dude, that is so badass. Wow. It looks like Vader took care of all these guys on his own. I don't even see a stormtrooper in sight. This is nice, too. Really, really dynamic piece. Goodness gracious. Wow. Okay, I gotta stop. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you guys all later. Have a great day, and uh, I will be back... With Eric Canetti, we'll, we'll like if if Eric can't do it on Tuesday, then I'll try to do a video on Tuesday. But uh, have a great Sunday, and uh, I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.